Huh. Okay, now it's recording. Yeah. All right, happy Tuesday, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, welcome to GDG Cloud Edmonton Ask Me Anything uh, sessions. My name is Wen Fei. I'm the host of today's session. And the topic for today's session is things you want to know about startups. And today we are very happy to have uh, Asmat joining us as the guest. Asmat is an entrepreneur himself. And uh, uh, Asmat, I will let you say hello to the audience. And maybe you can talk a bit about your background so that um, the audience can know you better. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me. So I'm Esmat. I'm, I'm part of uh, two to three startups at the moment. One is not formalized completely. And so uh, two of the startups that I work with are Nyad Lab and uh, NAKR. Both of them pretty much similarly focus on virtualizing things. So with Nyad Lab, we're focusing on br bringing medical grade uh, virtual clinic idea into motion. And with uh, the NAKR, we're trying to uh, you utilize AR and uh, virtual fitting for e-commerce purposes. And so, yeah, I'm just, it's great to be here. Thank you, Wenfei, for inviting me. Awesome. Thank you, Asmat. It's, uh, it, 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 it's fantastic. I mean, it's fascinating to know that you're working on multiple uh, uh, companies. That's fantastic. So so you must enjoy, uh, enjoy working for a uh, startup, right? So, so my, I mean, the first question we have right here, uh, we received from the uh, from the audience is that what's it like to work for a startup company compared to you know working for big companies or other mm -hmm. uh, scenarios? Uh, I mean, there are many many differences, major differences and minor differences. The main ones that I would list out: what's it like to work for a startup? It it is always an uphill battle. I know we're talking about working for a startup company, but also starting one and even just working in it is an uphill battle uh, in, in general uh, because you're pretty much going against everyone and everything that is existent. As a startup, you're building something new and you have to prove a million things in there. First, the product, the idea, the business model, whether you're going to be successful. You know, the payer, your client, is only interested in does it work for them? And while you're plan is different because you're trying to do something different. You're trying to disturb the market. Not many people like that in general. So it is always an uphill battle to prove because that, that comes on you. You virtually with minimal resources and minimal money, you have to prove and uh, you have to keep proving that what you do matters and it's disruptive in a good way though, that it brings value in the end. The other one is, the other couple of them are you're constantly thinking and you're not you're not exactly resting like from nine to five after I, w I had a job from nine to five at one point and after five or six o'clock, you're not thinking about it. You kind of go home, you rest. You, I mean, if you're diligent, you do. But with a startup, even when you're going on a jog, you're at home, you're having dinner, you're always thinking about the issues, always thinking. You're, uh, your mind is always working. You're always solving problems on a daily basis. The biggest difference between a startup and a established company is you're working in an extremely experimental environment. That is the best thing about it. Yeah, there is a lot of hardship and hard work, but you're, it is all about experimenting and being open. So with all the planning that you do for a product or for a business, it doesn't matter in the end of the day because each day the situation is different and you need to have a fresh mind and perspective. So you need to keep experimenting with new product they're in different versions, different clients, perhaps. You start off with one idea and you end up selling something else one year after. And that's the beauty of startup is that it's it's fluid and it's experimental. Yeah, yeah I can totally relate to that. Uh, I mean, my professional job is a uh, you know program manager at the incubator, right? So I do work very much with um, many entrepreneurs. I think, uh, I, I mean, I think working for uh, like like as um, uh, as Matt mentioned is a dynamic uh, environment. You you are doing uh, different things. Uh, I mean, every day, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. challenging, but at the same time, is is rewarding. And and, yes. and 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 from my perspective, I think um, one of the most um, appealing things of working uh, for a startup is the passion you can see in the team, right? Like mm -hmm. everybody's working very hard uh, towards the same goal. And you will believe, I mean, uh, you, you, you are believing in your uh, goal will be disruptive and 
will be different, and it will change something in the existing world, and that's really exciting, right? Exactly. There, there is a like for example, we were talking about um, the. I mean, if I may, uh, we were talking about the benefits of working for a startup compared to a big company. If you want, yeah. If, yeah. if we were to talk about that, there's one huge thing is excitement. There's a lack of structure in a startup because you're you're just starting out. A lack of structure gives you an opportunity to build your own systems and structure. That so there's room for creativity, but also like you said, it, it's like working in a system with people like-minded like you. So it's like a small family in a way, and all of you are working together to reach that similar goal. And everyone in a usually in a startup, everyone does have a similar goal, unless it's built differently, like un unless it's from a big company that's fueling a startup. Usually, if it's just, you know, you and I and a, two other friends get together to build something, we all have the same goal. And that is the most stimulating part. You know, working with similar minded people, working with similar goals, you know, even even just loving your coworkers. You, you do work and then I, I'm able to grab dinner, lunch with you. I never get bored from you. For example, I with my coworkers, I I go on jogs with them. I go see them on weekends. We're never tired of each other. So that, but I mean, with nine to five, there are people. Sometimes you just don't want to see them again. <laughs> you just want to work, and that's it. But you have to see them because it's part of the job. Uh, you know, and and working on disruptive ideas. That's that's a huge different one from from a big company stand. I've worked with two major companies before, and they. You know, you're, you're working on a product or a system or a service, resource, whatever, that, is, that has been established and you're just redoing in order to generate revenue. Not very disruptive. You're, you're not working in a, in a disruptive environment where you're actually driven, usually. If pe there are people, great individuals who are driven to keep implementing something and, you know, they love that. That's, that's totally fine. But from what I've seen with my group members, we always want to do that something new, that disruptive idea, that next thing, and and you know, looking forward to it. Even on weekends, we'd keep working just for that vision. And yeah, so yeah, you're totally correct. I just gave a long answer on top of yours. Yeah, that's fantastic. I I, I totally agree. So, uh, I mean, during my time working for for incubator, I mean, myself, I'm not. I'm not an entrepreneur per se, but uh, I mean, the way how we work is very, uh, it's more like an uh, uh, entrepreneur, right? Because that's who we are working with. And uh, I mean, from that experience, I found it's very fun to learn all sorts of knowledge and skills in, 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 in different domains. So for example, if you're working for a big company, you are, I, I mean, the tasks, as Asma, you mentioned, is uh, uh, relatively uh, narrow, right? You are focused on some specific yeah. tasks repet uh, uh, repetitively again and again. But mm -hmm. if you are an entrepreneur or if you're working for a startup, then you you will you will get opportunity to learn uh, like many things, many new things uh, along the way. And then I I I I just feel like it's it's very fun to learn how a company can 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 move forward. Not 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 to mention to succeed. Uh, so you have to uh, you have to mastermind uh, you have to uh, mastermize all sorts of knowledge and skill sets and that experience I think it's really rewarding and also uh, I mean after the experience for example even the um, startup is not working after say two or three years you I mean yourself would be so much different compared to the version two or three years before so yeah. so so that's something I I, I think really fun and, and and appealing to people who would like challenges and like to be different yeah yeah i completely agree with you i for just a quick example i, I worked in a, a construction company before a field construction and that pretty much is a very hard condition to work in because you're solving problems day to day and you're in a small team it's almost like a startup it's an engineering job. You have to keep solving problems every day. You have to keep making sure everything is running smoothly, all operations. It's on you as the field engineer. However, again, there are differences, right? Because, but in a startup, you're not just working on the product or the engineering part. You're literally working on everything. You have to work on the business portion. You also have to work on the product portion. You have to work on the marketing portion. Everyone understands each other's battle. There is no 
give it to the sales section. No, you are the sales section. You're also the product developer. You're also the engineer. <laughs> and so in that small group, you know, when my work experience in a company, I acquired skills that were narrow, though. It, it, was, it was challenging, but it was narrowed down to the engineering and working in a small group to make this project happen. But in, in a startup, you're exposed to an array of problems. There is legal, there is accounting, there is the product, there is planning, there is engineering, there is so much more. So in, in a year, I think you acquire much more experience than working maybe four years in, in another setting. And this is my personal opinion. That, that's the way I see it. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. So, so that comes to our third question, which is that, um, so, so, so for example, for a typical developer, let's assume uh, he or she has very good technical skills, right? So, mm -hmm. so, so other than that, what kind of skills um, uh, would be required of working for a startup to excel? Many, many other skills, many other skills. Uh, on to te technical skill, to be honest with you, a, a lot of people argue that technology drives the startup, you know, like it's technology only. It, it may be 15%, 20%. Uh, as much as technology makes the difference or the vision, it's how you implement it. Then it all becomes people's game. You, you have to understand people and work together with people. One of the biggest things I would say is resourcefulness. Uh, you might be resourceful as a product developer to find free, you know, something and plug it in and utilize and make a program, but you need to be resourceful from a personnel standpoint, from time standpoint, from how do you push your agenda forward? Look around you. You you can we we started literally in Panda Express with two people, just working because we didn't have any other table space, and just by resourcefulness, meaning we start to email people at the U of A. A professor helped us. Suddenly, you crack into things that they know for funding. Suddenly, you understand that there are ways of support. Then you meet great individuals like yourself and other people from, uh, you know, Alberta AI, for example, or, or Tastar or uh, Tech Edmonton, and they support you. There, are, there is support available, but you have to look for it and be resourceful. You need to know what's around you to put together to get to the solution, but never forget the solution itself. Build a roadmap. The other one is have confidence. Confidence in your idea and team members. I know product developers don't have confidence in other team members usually. They usually like to solve problems by themselves, but you need to let go of that control. Uh, if you're going to pull the, pull a team together, you need to be confident in them and make sure that when you give them a task, you give them time, space, and let them do it. Give them resources, check in on them, but let them have their own way at the times, which brings me to flexibility and fluidity. Be flexible. Be ready to change your course of ideas when a feedback is given. We started off with one version with what we were thinking for the AR uh, uh, fitting uh, for e-commerce. We ended up in a totally different place just because we start to engage the people in the market and their response was different to our prototypes. Each time we would show them a prototype, oh, actually, we need this. We need differently. And sometimes people, other people would criticize, other developers or other consumers. You have to be ready and be flexible. Uh, I know when, with development, when you build it yourself, it's hard to move around that. But you need to be ready to, to change as, as much as possible, which brings it to the last one, which I think is important. This is my top, top four ones. Uh, the last fourth one would be listening. You just always have to have an open ear and be ready to to change your product never change your vision the vision is our vision never changed it's about virtualizing experience virtualizing shopping virtualizing um, you know uh, clinical visits but the way to do it can be changed there is no one right way to do it yeah absolutely absolutely so so with this for um Skills um, uh, are needed, um, uh, as you mentioned. I think I can recognize uh, the best with the last one to listening, right? So, so for, for, from my opinion, I think um, uh, 
the most important skill or like the soft skill, I, I, I would say, uh, required for working for a startup is to have an open mind, right? Like a growth mindset. Yeah. You have to listen to your environment and see what kind of skills or knowledge you have to gain in order to, you know, uh, help push the, uh, you know, the movement of the uh, startup you're working for so i think the growth mindset is, is definitely uh, one of the most important things uh required for people who would like to work for a startup because as we mentioned earlier it's a dynamic environment you might be working on different um, projects or or like, like using uh, various um, knowledge and domain knowledge so so that's definitely one of the most important things uh in my opinion or i can resonate the best mm -hmm. um yeah, perfect so so that's my, uh our next question is so do you have any suggestions on like materials or online courses that um, like our developers can go to for, you know, t for, for gaining some uh, extra skills or knowledge uh, or like preparing for the uh, career path in uh, startups? I, um, this is the one question that I, that I have a hard time answering always really. Uh, I mean, there are great books and material out there. I, I usually don't depend on, course material i think i think all of course can be found in books you 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 just find books and also not business books don't no um and i apologize for saying this maybe maybe some people don't agree but i would say in my personal opinion stay away from business books because business books give you a rigid profit you know it, it clouds your judgment for a startup because as a startup you're trying to be open minded and build something. It's a, it's a vision. How you make that vision happen depends on many different things. What's your focus on? Technical, a business focus, what are you doing? But finding that path um, cannot be mapped out ever. Uh, you, you will need to experience it yourself and make decisions on the way. And again, sometimes there are a couple of right answers, a couple of wrong answers, and you just go with one. There are great books on personal development that I would suggest. Personal development ones like uh, the power of habit, uh, you know, seven habits of highly effective people. I think zero to one is a really great book. I, I'm, I apologize, I don't remember the authors of any of them. I just read it quickly, but those are great books for personal development. You know, where you stand, how to discipline yourself. But other than that, don't dwell too much on course material or um, books and business books, especially. The keys to rely on yourself be mindful, watch, and know when to act. I think in the end, it all comes down to how audacious you can be in, in a positive way, not in a, a negative way, how audacious you can be just to do something you like, a calculated risk, uh, but a risk nonetheless. So you, everyone here knows they are going to be taking a risk. You know, the many books are out there, but in the end, it all comes down to they can't change the way you're, you're thinking. Books can't. It's you, you need to train yourself, you need to experience it firsthand and see what to do. So course material, books, they, they, they may waste more of your time than, than you think. Uh, you know, personal development is something very important. Always making yourself better, whether it's tr through exercise or, you know, again, changing habits, making yourself wake up at 5 a.m. I don't know, that, you have to find that out. But, you know, don't dwell too much on, on business books rather than acting more. Yeah, that would, that would be my really harsh suggestion. Yeah, thank you very much. That's very uh, inspiring. So, 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 so uh, from pre previous um, sessions, we talked about um, uh, career development. We also mentioned, like, as you mentioned, uh, as Matt, personal development is very important because that's how you understand yourself, right? And then you will know mm -hmm. what kind of things you would like to do and, and, and what, what, like, what kind of things you're good at. And if you, if you can see the overlap of these two areas, then you are a very lucky person and, 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 and most likely you will excel in your uh, career. Exactly. So, so, yeah, and, and, and um, the, the book From Zero to One, I also read the book. Uh, it, it is a very good book. I I, I found it's uh, it's my uh, my mind blowing because um, it's uh, it, I, I mean it's, it's it's telling stories and 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 ideas in a way. Some like like at least myself, I didn't thought I I mean I didn't think uh, of before, and and that book is really inspiring and and mind blowing. I think yeah. that's definitely something. Uh, mm -hmm 
people should uh, go and um, you know read it. Um, mm-hmm. and, and and on top of we uh, of what you suggested, I think um, uh, I I mean myself, I I had the background in nano fabrication. So mm-hmm. so before I. You know, uh, I, I mean, right after my graduation, I ha- I I didn't have a business background, right? So, but but in order to um, you know understand how it works in the business world and uh, and and you know how startups work, mm-hmm. I I went to Coursera to uh, have a uh, I I think it's called Foundation of Entrepreneurship. I I found it's a very uh, informative course on uh, Coursera because it's not like having you know, many kind of like theories or principles from the, uh, you know, the the old school business books. It's yeah, more like yeah. uh, giving you some ideas and, you know, some basic knowledge you need to have if you are interested in startups. So that I, I, I feel like that um, uh, course will give you the minimum, um, you know, minimal uh, uh, knowledge you will need of working at a startup. And then, you know, if you need, um, you know, more knowledge in business or financing or whatever um, areas that might be, you can pick it up later at the time when yeah. when, it, when it comes to that um, stage. So I think mm-hmm. that's, um, that's was, I mean, that will also be something uh, beneficial for developers who, who are uh, uh, planning for um, for this um, kind of uh, career path. Uh, mm-hmm. Thank you, Asmat. Yeah. So we have yeah. one last question. Or for maybe sure. uh, it, it, so. So, so this question is that: um, Are you guys looking for developers? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 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 so I'm asking this because um, uh, at GDG Cloud Edmonton, we are a, a, a big community, right? So currently on Meetup.com, uh, we've already got um, uh, three, about three hundred and sixty uh, uh, members. So mm-hmm. most of them they are developers or like a programming background, right? So, mm-hmm. so, so basically, we have very good uh, talent pool. So if you're looking for uh, some talents, feel free to let me know, and and you know I can I can help you find the best one you're looking for. I can answer this right now. I, <laughs> awesome. We're always looking for for talented individuals. I mean, especially for our uh, AR shopping, uh, the project itself. It's uh, it's becoming more and more complex, and this is again part of the the fact that the journey itself shows its hardships. You can't plan for it. So there are, you know, there are always projects that we have, uh, opportunities that we have. And, uh, you know, if anybody's interested, I would love to explain more, talk with them more. I, I'm always available to take an evening out and just explain anything they want to know. I mean, even if you're not interested to work, if you're just interested to learn more, let me know. And, uh, yeah, please g- give any referrals uh, back and forth, and it would be great to know more. Fantastic. Thank you very much again, uh, Esmat. Thank you very much for your no insight problem. and uh, suggestions and your time. All right. Um, well, thank I you so much for inviting. Yeah. Thank you. So I guess this is for today, uh, everyone. So we uh, see you next week. Have a good uh, evening. Take care. Bye, Esmat. Thank you again. Bye-bye.